hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. Sometimes we just got to keep on saying hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I've had one of those weeks that I had to keep on saying hallelujah, hallelujah. So I thank God that I can say it and I can experience it and I can feel his presence when I lift up that hallelujah. Hallelujah, because things come to test our faith. And when things come to test our faith, we got to say hallelujah. Ah, glory to God. I was in a situation on this weekend, and I text one of my prayer partners to pray. And all she sent back was hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah in the text. <laughs> I said, oh, glory to God. She said, you got to say hallelujah. Because God is going to make another way. Amen. 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 Our message today is mustard seed faith, big moves. Mustard seed faith, big moves. Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 to 21. Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 to 21. Mustard sea faith, big moon. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that is here on today, Lord God. We thank you for everyone that has entered your gates with thanksgiving and enter your court with praise. We thank you for your unfailing love and your tender mercies. And as we've praised and exalted you, we've come to this time of the hour that we can hear your word. So as we open our hearts, oh God, we pray even now that you give us wisdom, knowledge, revelation, and understanding of this word, that we may apply this word to our lives, and that we may encourage someone else by what is said on today. Use your servant for your glory. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory. To God. Amen. In, in the life of a believer, every day is a test of faith. Some days more than others. There are times when the evil of this world tries to derail our faith. Times when bad news hurts more than it should. Times when it seems like you can't rebound from failure. You can find yourself falling into the category of, oh, you of little faith. Jesus said this many times to his faithful followers. This can be any of us at any time. I remember when I had completed radiation therapy for cancer. One day, something else started happening in my body. I didn't know what it was. And the doctor said, come in and take some x-rays. It was a Friday. So that means that I wasn't going to get the results from that x-ray until Monday. So I went in, did the x-rays. And all that weekend, I had to deal with the symptoms that was happening in my body. Imagine you have just been through one of the worst times in life, and now there is possibly more to come. But thank God for moving on my mustard seed faith. I thank God for moving on my mustard seed faith, that even the little mustard seed faith that I had was enough for God to work a miracle for me. Oh, glory to God. It is in these moments when your faith can become small as a mustard seed. You and I can empathize with the disciples when Jesus said, Oh, you of little faith, go with me to Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 to 21. Oh, glory to God. So Jesus said to them, because you are, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, 
and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. A mustard seed of faith is small faith that has the potential to become great faith that will be able to move mountains. We all have to start somewhere and end up in the, in the place that can move more than a mountain. Let's start moving. Let's start moving a mountain by recognizing it is not about quantity but trust. Let's start moving a mountain by recognizing you need continual dependence on the Lord. Let's start moving a mountain by recognizing the potential to have great faith. A few weeks ago, we learned that faith people are commended by Christ for their great faith. They are also noted to praise and worship for obstacles that are moved by faith on their behalf, whether it is physical or not. Keep in mind, faith, even small, makes big things move. Faith, even small, makes big things move. It's not about quantity, but trust. When we look at something small, it may seem to be a li of little value. The image of a mustard seed is only about a one millimeter. It's very tiny. The, the mustard seed is only about one millimeter. Very, very tiny. So if you drop that mustard seed, sometimes it's very hard for you to find it again. Oh, help us, Jesus. When Jesus referenced mustard seed, he, he did not stress the size of the seed. In the original Greek translation, he simply said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will be able to speak to the mountain, move, and it will move. That's what it says in the original Greek translation. And so that's why we have to explore all aspects of, of the Bible, especially in the original language, because it tells us a little bit differently than how man has been able to translate it. Oh, glory to God. Another reason Jesus didn't tell them to have faith the size of a mustard seed is because a mustard seed is small. And Jesus constantly rebuked them for having small faith, or what we say, little faith. But Jesus, aware of this, said, Oh, you of little faith, why are you discussing amongst yourself the fact that you have no bread? Why was they discussing amongst themselves the fact that they don't have bread when the giver of bread was right with them and all they have to do is ask him in faith to produce bread? Oh, help us, Jesus. Matthew chapter 16, verses 8. Then there is Matthew chapter 14, verses 31 that also mentions small faith or little faith. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? This is Peter. Jesus said, Get out the boat, and he walked on the water with him. And then when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he started to sink. And Jesus then asked him, uh, Jesus then said to him, Oh, you of little faith, oh, help us, Lord. When Jesus mentioned mustard seed faith, he was encouraging us to start somewhere. You, you must grow your faith like a mustard seed 30 feet tall. A mustard seed grows to 30 feet tall, grows a tree that is 30 feet tall. Help us, Jesus. Trust helps us to build faith in the fact that God can do more than we can. 
trust. To trust is to believe in the reliability, truth, ability, and strength of something. When you build your trust on the Lord, it means believing in his reliability, his word, his ability, and his strength when curveballs of life is thrown at us. When you receive a curveball, something that comes out of the way uh, at you, uh, we got to then rely on the Lord. It's just like when that situation happened to me, it came out of nowhere. I thought it, everything was good and I was ready to go. But here comes the curveball. But we got to put our trust in the Lord. Trust is not about how you feel, but your belief in what is possible with God. Remember the Lord said, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7. God's reliability is what you are basing the growth of your trust upon. For you to depend on the Lord, you must trust, and trust leads to growth in faith. Trust leads to the growth of your faith. Oh, glory to God. You need continual dependence on the Lord. Some of us put too much dependence on family and friends when they are as vulnerable to the same challenges that you face. Interestingly, we know who or what we are dependent on when crisis after crisis hits us. People have lost friends in crises because they are not dependable. But God does not do that. God does not have that same attitude uh, as your friend. Uh, he comes to all the time. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Uh, Numbers 23 and 19. Uh, the original, the origin, um, excuse me, the origin of mustard seed faith is based on the disciples uh, failing to help a man with his son. He, de he depended on them to do what Jesus could do for his son by healing him. Because they was with Jesus, he was expecting that they were able to do the same things that Jesus did. Oh, glory to God. Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 to 19, she is the picture of their dependence on Jesus. Uh, the disciples' uh, dependence on Jesus. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him or heal him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured or healed from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out. They said, why could we not cast it out? This was not the only time the disciples wanted Jesus to help them in the area of faith. Luke chapter 17, verses 5 to 6 states, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree to be rooted and plant, uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey. Oh, glory to God. This time he told them they can move a tree. 
the last time he told them they can move a mountain. Help us, Jesus. Like the disciples, we must continually depend on the Lord. Reliance on Jesus is the door to faith and fruitful living. Life is meant to be lived dependent on God every day and not some days. Help us, Lord. This is why Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. John chapter 15, verses 5. Note he stated, you can do nothing without remaining with him. Dependence on the Lord uh, deepens your determination. Dependence on the Lord gives you helps your faith to grow. Dependence starts by acknowledging the Almighty God as the owner of everything. As the word says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. Psalms 24 and 1. When you continually depend on the Lord, you can acknowledge that there will be nothing impossible with you with everything everything within God's reach your mustard seed faith can go a long way keep in mind Jesus said faith as a mustard seed can move a mountain oh glory to God the potential to have great faith finally the mountain that is before you will cause your potential to come forth if you allow it. The bigger the mountain, the more faith you, we will eventually need. The bigger the challenges in this life, the more faith you will eventually need. Potential is the ability that everyone has to do more. We all have to we all have an unrealized ability that can lead us to success or something greater, but we need to do something with it. Notice the advice that Jesus gave the disciples when they asked why we could not deliver the man's son. Oh, glory to God. He said, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Matthew chapter 17, verses 21. He calls them uh, to build their faith through prayer and fasting. You too uh, can grow to have great faith through prayer and fasting. Uh, oh, glory to God. When you pray, you are, do, you are uh, uh, exercising your faith. So when you pray, when you're praying, you are exercising your faith. The things most of us ask God for in prayer are not something we can do on our own. So if we're asking God for healing for a friend or a neighbor or even ourselves, we can't do that on our own. We need his divine intervention. By praying, you are putting your trust and your dependence on Jesus. Here is our confirmation in John chapter 14, uh, verses 12 uh, to 14. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the work that I do. And greater work than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Notice he said, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. He said, this I will do. Whatever you ask in his name, he said he will do. If you ask, if you ask anything, if you ask me anything in my name, 
I will do it. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Personal prayer is essential to our faith and will increase our faith and help us to overcome the adversity that threatens our faith. Then there is fasting, which adds another element to us growing in faith. Fasting takes the focus off of you and place it on what is pleasing to the Lord. Jesus was telling the disciples and us today to remove any distraction which will cause us to not rely on him. There are different types of fasting, but spiritual fasting makes us sense sensitive to the things of God and his resolve. Combining your, your fasting with prayer is like adding plant food to the soil. I want to say that again. Combining your fasting with prayer is like adding plant food to the soil. It will assist in the growth. Oh, glory to God. Uh, prayer and fasting has been linked to many large mountains or challenges being moved uh, in people's lives and nations. Uh, just ask Queen, just ask Queen Esther, who called a fast uh, to keep her people from being destroyed. Go after all the Jews to be found in Susa. And hold a fast on my behalf, and do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. And I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Oh, help us, Jesus. Esther chapter 4, verses 16. Later, the king granted her request. So she did not perish, and neither did her people. Today, make King Jesus the grantor of your request by faith. You should want the Lord to commend you for having great faith. In closing, even though a mustard seed, oh, glory to God, even though a mustard seed, seed is small, it has potential to be greater than its size. Right now, you may not have great faith, but know that your mustard seed is the beginning and it can work for you. Oh, glory to God. Jesus said you can move a mountain with a mustard seed faith. He did not say a large or a small mountain, which can indicate any size can be moved. Remember, your mustard seed faith works through Jesus, and Jesus has all the power. Oh, glory to God. Big things can happen with mustard mustard seed faith. It's not about quantity, but trust in the Lord. Ah, glory to God. Big things can happen with mustard seed faith. You need continual dependence on the Lord. Big things can happen with mustard seed faith. There is the potential to have great faith. God will do it, but you must want to put your faith to action. Faith as a mustard seed pleases the Lord, so don't give up. Oh, glory to God. I want to say that again. Faith as a mustard seed pleases the Lord, so don't give up. It's time for us to pray. Oh, glory to God. Father God, we just thank you, oh God, for your grace and your mercies on today. We thank you, oh God, that you, oh Lord, have encouraged us, oh God, to continue to grow in our faith. We ask you right now, Lord God, uh, God, to seed in our hearts uh, and our minds, oh God, that we need to depend uh, 
and trust in you. And so, Father God, we ask you right now, Lord, to move any obstacles out of our way, anything that will hinder our faith, oh God, anything that is hindering our lives, oh God. We stand in faith, oh God, today, asking that it be removed. Any challenges that we face, oh God, in this hour, in the name of Jesus, we are we are asking you, oh Lord, to let it flee, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we honor you and we thank you on today, Lord God, that you're encouraging us to grow, that you're encouraging us to rely and to depend on you, and that you're encouraging us to exercise our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We don't want to believe that everyone has a relationship with Christ. But we want you to come into that relationship. We want you to open up your heart and let Jesus in. That relationship is important to you. It is also important to those that are in your family. Because it may be you that will lead them into that relationship as well. Jesus died so that you can have life beyond this life. Jesus died so that you can be with him one day in glory. He said he's preparing a place. He's already prepared that place for us. And so he wants us to be in that place with him. But he also wants you that while you are yet alive, while you are yet on this earth, he wants to help you to get through the challenges and the obstacles and the adversities that you are facing. That's what Jesus wants, wants to do for you. And so you have to open your heart and let him in. And if that is you, you're going to first admit. Admit that you're a sinner. You've done things wrong in the sight of God. And that you need God to forgive you. And then you must believe that you're forgiven. Jesus came so that you will be forgiven. And you have to believe that within your heart. Oh, glory to God. And then you must confess Whatever we believe, we confess. We want to confess and make Jesus the Lord of our lives. That's what you want to confess today to do. You want Jesus to be the Lord of your life. He's already the Savior. He already saved the world. It's now we're preparing ourselves for our heavenly home. And we're preparing ourselves to, to be able to get through the challenges that we face here on earth. So your confession it's important. He said, if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, you will be saved. Oh, glory to God. So if that is you, I want you to bow your head and say this prayer with me. This prayer is like a point of connection. It is also a witness to you and to those around you that you believe, that you accept that Jesus is Lord and that you want him in your life. So say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Take away my sin. Wash me in your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you said that prayer, angels in heaven are rejoicing, and so are we here at One Worship Place. And if you said that prayer, we need you to call us and let us know. And if you don't want to call us, email us and let us know that you have said that prayer. God loves you, and we love you too. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our church family here at One Worship Place would appreciate your support in many ways that you can give. Uh, through the Giftify app, Cash app, by mail, or, or on our website, God bless.